nerd dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 66 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. What if I told you that we could write our code in such a way that we could dynamically allow for rolling of any number of dice, including our advantage and disadvantage methods? In our Codecast today, I'm going to show you the way of Ruby metaprogramming by overriding the method missing method. We won't be writing any code on Nerd Dice itself this episode. Method missing is a powerful and sharp tool that must be used responsibly in order to not break your project and maintain a reasonable level of performance. If this is your first foray into metaprogramming, I am going to free your mind. Let's see how deep the rabbit hole goes. All right done being Morpheus for a minute here. So what we have, this is going to be a fairly substantial epic uh, and will constitute the entirety of um, our 0.4 release. So this has been in our issues log for a while. You can see I uh, set this up in December 2020. It is now October of 2021. And we are going to elaborate on this idea. As a user, I want to be able to execute something like roll 3d8 plus 2, roll d20 with advantage, and have it just work irrespective of the number of sides on the dice. So how would we go about doing that? There is a, a method on every Ruby object called method missing that gets called if you um, don't have a uh, a method defined on that particular object. By default, let me run into a console here. The method missing method will raise a no method error and tell you that the method is undefined and provide you with the um, stack trace on it. So that is the default um, implementation of method missing and for most of your Ruby work, you don't need to touch it, it works just fine. But because this method exists and because Ruby allows you to override any method, it has emerged over time as a way to allow for uh, dynamic metaprogramming where, let's say, we've got this, you, you type roll 3d8 plus 2 into um, the console or call it from another piece of code, and it can, um, let me show you the structure of how method missing typically works. So you've got your method name, which will be a, a, of type symbol. You'll have um, this splat args here. It will be all of your normal arguments. Uh, the double splat uh, keyword arguments are all your um, keyword arguments um, that are in the method and then the block if one is provided. And then you can do something like um, if the method name to string matches something, in this case tax, return taxation is theft and um, we can try that out so I will go back into our console define this module call extend on that object that we have already and let's say we wanted to do I don't know why you'd want to do this. We call o.tax the rich, and it will return that string that we had, taxation is theft. And here we're going to see the first important thing that you need to do when you're um, overriding method missing. So we've got method missing here. We're intercepting if it says, um, tax, we're um, returning taxation as theft, but what happens now if I go back and do 
um, o dot foo again, it returns nil, which in most cases is probably not what you want here. So the solution there, we can see mm better, is to, uh, it, in the event that it doesn't match your specific criteria for your, um, that you're matching for, we'll do create a new object here. better than taxing the rich and it agrees here so now if I do a dot foo it will it doesn't match uh, the regular expression we have here tax and so it will in the else statement here call super which is the default implementation of method missing that way now we have not broken our our tiny little um, metaprogramming implementation here. So now yeah, I can do a dot tax the rich. It'll remind you that taxation is theft. Just do a dot tax. That'll work. But a dot I don't know a dot pass a law. We haven't written anything for that. Uh, so that will continue to implement method missing. So whenever, almost whenever you're um, overriding method missing, um, and you really need to know what you're doing if you don't do this, uh, you, your, your best principle is to override method missing in the exact specific um, scenarios that you want to define and override it for and then delegate back to the default implementation in the event that it doesn't match any of these. The, the next thing we're going to do is just illustrate the the time here so do this 20 million times oh that is not going to work unless I so let me get rid of that puts statement and illustrate it here um, I don't want to save still working. It's no longer telling me that it's in method missing. But if we go and do this, So that took a while um, to, to do that. And because it's doing that because every single time it's calling that method, it is going into method missing, going up the stack to see if the method is um, defined on any of the um, any of the parents or super classes of the current class. It will um, then go back and see if method missing is overridden on any of those classes. And so it's a it's a slow operation. If you if you do it real time, it's it's happening so fast that you don't notice it. But 
if you um, if you do it a bunch of times, it will it will add up. So let's go back to the, the version that you do puts in method missing and just do it a few times. We'll make a new object here so that we can still use A if we need to. And you can notice here, even though we didn't modify A or re-extend the class, it went back and um, because it's got that module included, when we modified the module, redefined it, it now um, is, is picking up that, that implementation of that. So I'm going to just do five times here. see and each time it's calling method missing here and if we wanted to do puts you can see here it's each time it's going into method missing then it's um, kind of dynamically interacting with the data that we've got and then it is um, going back into method missing each time. So as noted, the performance on that isn't so great. So there's a, an additional way that you can go about doing this, which is in, you're, you're in method missing and you get to the point where you're, you've got your match here. You can um, use the define method argument on the the define method method on the class here and uh, so you, you call a class eval in this block and then you're defining that method with the um, the information that you've got and then at the end here it will return the value but now you will have that method defined I'm going to temporarily comment out the self dot send here to illustrate what happens if you don't include that in your method missing implementation. And we've got C. So here's a, a potential for a bug here. So you're like, all right, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna define the method, everything is looking great. And then the first time you write this, you can see it's going to return the symbol tax the rich of the method you've just defined, which is not what you want. So the second time you do this, it'll give you the implementation that you want there and you can see here that it, it doesn't go into method missing the second time. And if we do C dot methods, scroll up here, you can see that tax the rich is now a defined method on this object. So every time you do this subsequently, so if we go, um, let me get rid of the in method missing here, rewrite my module. So
So you can see that that was much, much faster than when we um, went up through and used method missing each time. So that's what you want to do. And then to fix the issue of that, um, that method not, oops, not getting called correctly the first time. So you would need to, after you define your method, you would now do self.send with your method name, arguments, keyword arguments, and block. So now if we go and do that, and we do, you can see the first time now that we're implementing this, it's um, working as expected and c.methods now you can see that eliminate taxes has been added to prepended to our method list so that's what we are looking for here the other thing that I'm gonna do let me go back to noting that we're in method missing is that you can also when you're defining the method uh, interact with the the arguments and all those things. So right now it's gonna be fairly simple. We're just going to um, put those arguments, uh, put each of the keywords, and then yield if the block is given. So we'll re-rewrite our method here, and now we'll do, see, we can see here that, um, actually we're gonna do a new object because the, the one thing that will uh, trip you up, so let, let me show you. Um, so this method is already defined, so it's never going to hit um, method missing here. It didn't do anything with our arguments because that method is already defined and it's not hitting method missing. But if we go in now and do that same set of arguments to something that has not yet, or a similar set of arguments, I guess, is going to be what we wind up doing. Taxes, we'll call this one. see we're in method missing we uh, listed our arguments here so we just did args.join and then we listed our keyword arguments so keyword taxation value theft keyword Ron Paul value hero and then we yielded I'm the block and then finally after that returned our taxation is theft um, return value via doing self.send. And if we go now, c dot uh, another method, we will get back to, we're still, method missing is still working and that is what we want. So that is kind of an overview of what we will be doing conceptually and how to responsibly use method missing. So you think about our situation, we'll probably wind up breaking this into smaller methods uh, that will handle all of the different scenarios that we need to account for with our uh, regular expressions and matching. So let's go back to our, um, so 
are more detailed requirements set here. And we're going to just kind of run through what we're going to wind up doing in our subsequent videos. So um, the first thing, the simplest use case is that we do role underscore and then um, D any set of numbers, it will call nerd dice dot roll dice with, uh, with those. So D20, D8, D1000. And then if we do total and then that underscore, it will call total dice. Um, so those are methods we've already defined. In our R spec, we can uh, test that, the, that it receives those exact um, methods with those exact um, arguments. We also want to be able to handle the ability to roll more than one die. So um, we'll have the, the pattern roll 2d20, 3d8, 22d1000, etc. And we need to account for that because that's a separate pattern to match than, than our uh, more common use case. Uh, then we need to make sure that our keyword arguments are passed on to roll dice and total dice appropriately. So that is what we were doing here with uh, making sure that we're capturing args and keyword arguments and um, the define method here where you pass args, keyword arguments and block. Um, and then uh, rather than doing put statements, we can uh, add them in when we call the, the methods and that will allow us to delegate properly with the methods intact and behaving in such a way that we, um, we know that they're still working. Um, our next set of features will be with advantage n or highest n will roll with advantage with disadvantage n or lowest n will roll with disadvantage. Uh, so, and then we have the the one variant here that if you let's say you want to do roll d20 with advantage here, um, in most cases it's going to t you're going to specify the number of dice beforehand. But in the case of no um, no integer pre um, prefix before that d there, you're going to roll two and keep the highest. That's kind of the default. Um, behavior of rolling with advantage and disadvantage is that you um, you roll two and keep one. So you, you wouldn't want to, if you didn't call that out and specify it when you uh, do it this way, it would be you'd roll one and keep one, which wouldn't be all that interesting and wouldn't make the method uh, behave in the way that a tabletop role player would expect it to. And then uh, finally, you still want to um, to note that there there could be situations where an error or exception is raised. So, like if you try to add a plus and a minus, um, you try to uh, add a plus and a bonus uh, that aren't consistent with each other. Um, you try to roll with advantage and disadvantage at the same time, and you try to again in your method name put lowest three and highest two or something like that. Anything like that, we will uh, raise an error on. It's likely that it's just going to raise an error out of the box when we do our, um, because we're delegating back to method missings um, super um, there. So I think that's um, already noted in the comment that we've got here. And then the the one other main thing that you've got is the um, that bonus inconsistency, which will be a custom error, I believe, that we'll need to um, to check for. But that is our overview of what we'll be doing in our upcoming videos. I'm excited about this. I've been looking forward to this uh, this part of the project for a while now. The uh, Ruby metaprogramming is really cool, and I think you'll. Um, enjoy coding along with this. And then I, in the backlog, I just went in and um, all those different requirements that I put in the issue have put in the to do section of the backlog. And we will get going on that in our next video. 
Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.